So today we're going to discuss a really interesting event that happened back in 2023 that barely anyone noticed, but that actually created a lot of different unanswered questions for a lot of different physicists and a lot of different cosmologists and astrophysicists that try to understand the universe as we know it today. The event referred to as KM3-23023A that you can kind of see happening right here in this video by the KM3Net research team. And the event was basically this, the detection of some kind of an incredibly powerful particle we've never seen before that managed to produce such a ridiculously powerful emission that it basically confused everyone because even today we still have no idea exactly what this was. But because this event produced an extremely powerful muon, and because this was a neutrino detector, here it's currently believed to be the most powerful neutrino ever seen. You can actually learn more about this event and some of the initial explanations in one of the recent videos in the description. But in essence, a few months back, KM3Net published a few studies, essentially analyzing exactly what happened, providing the exact evidence for what was observed, and providing some potential explanations, but basically leaving us with a mystery. But it's really this new study that we're going to be discussing today provides at least some explanations to what might have happened here and what we might have seen. And the suggestion here is that this might have been the first ever official detection of some kind of a dark matter particle. But before we talk about the study, let's briefly go through the event itself, especially if you're not going to be watching that previous video in the description, because I think most of you won't. Although if you are going to be watching something, you might as well watch this, the official announcement about this discovery that was released back in February of 2025. The link for this is also in the description. But in essence, this is, once again, some kind of a neutrino mystery. But this mystery is not coming from the usual suspect. It's not coming from Ice Cube, the massive neutrino detector in Antarctica. And instead it's coming from the Mediterranean and the newly designed and newly developed KM3Net, located just off the coast of Italy. And that's because in the last decade, we've actually seen major development in a lot of neutrino detectors around the planet, with several now being built and this one now becoming active and basically beginning its first run. And the reason we have these is to try to understand neutrinos. The most mysterious fundamental particles in the universe that are literally passing through you right now and none of us are feeling them because they barely interact with anything. But sometimes they do and when they do they usually produce what's known as a muon, a fundamental particle that does interact with physical matter much more frequently and that can then move through the detectors, producing a lot of visible light. And the more powerful the neutrino, the more powerful the muon, and the more detectors become activated, producing more light. And so in essence, when a typical particle passes through these detectors, it will usually leave behind a kind of a streak of light, resulting from the interaction of muons with the matter around them, in this case interactions with water. But on that date, something very bizarre happened in this location. For approximately 2 microseconds, 28,000 photons were detected in 12,000 detectors, with the total luminosity being so high that 25% of all detectors became oversaturated. They essentially became blinded by the light. And this suggested something very powerful. A single muon with the power of 120 peta electron volts, 100 trillion times higher than a typical visible light photon, and at least 35 times higher than anything seen before. But more importantly, if this was a neutrino, it was very likely even more powerful. Because for this muon to be created, neutrino would have to have even more power of at least 220 peta electron volts, which has never been seen before, but also created two major mysteries. One was in regards to its power. At the moment, nobody knows how such a powerful neutrino could be produced. Because this would be the most energetic neutrino ever detected, and because this was actually detected by using the three-dimensional vector you see right here, we kind of had an idea where it possibly came from. But when scientists tried to trace back the location, there was kind of nothing here. Scientists did expect some kind of a very powerful blazer, or basically a very powerful supermassive black hole with a jet pointed directly at us, which is kind of what the theory tells us should produce these neutrinos, but no plausible galactic sources were discovered in any of the locations observed. And once again, because this was the most powerful, here the expectation was for one of the most powerful blazers, which led to a major problem. The origin of this particle, that's now referred to as KM3-230213A, 
became unknown and debatable. Its extreme energy, in theory, could have been the result of some kind of a cosmic ray particle interacting with the atmosphere, kind of similar to the famous OMG particle we've discussed previously, but here we had that second problem, the actual traveling path. As reported in that Nature article, it seems to have traveled horizontally, which suggests that it traveled through a very large part of the Mediterranean Sea and also quite a lot of ground nearby. As a matter of fact, this path suggests that it traveled for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers before finally interacting with the KM3NET telescope. And so it could not have been a cosmic ray interacting with the atmosphere because here it was coming through the ground. And it was really that almost horizontal path that was basically the biggest problem. Because here the explanation kind of didn't make sense. It wasn't clear where it's coming from, it wasn't clear how this was created, but much more importantly, it was not clear why only this detector was able to see it. Because statistically speaking, if this was a blazer and if this was coming from some kind of a very very powerful event, the much more sensitive and the much larger ice cube would have seen something similar a long time ago and would probably be the first to detect such a bizarre event. And because this was assumed to be coming from outside of the Milky Way galaxy, from some kind of a very powerful cosmic accelerator, so most likely some kind of a super powerful black hole, we naturally expect very similar detections inside the ice cube. But it's seen nothing. For example, if this was a black hole or even a gamma ray burst, ice cube would have seen at least something, because it's extremely unlikely that just one particle coming from this location would strike the planet. And if this was a cosmic ray interacting with some kind of a photon, resulting in the production of this neutrino, once again here, Ice Cube should have seen something as well. And so because of the lack of correlation between galactic and extragalactic sources and the lack of detections in the Ice Cube, to date this remained one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology, in particle physics, and of course in neutrino physics that kind of help us understand how the universe works. Which is why this new study was kind of interesting. Now I'm not saying this is the best explanation because even here we have some problems, but right now this is super intriguing. And so let's discuss the study by Bhupal Dev and the team you see right here that proposes that maybe this is actually dark matter. Which by definition doesn't usually interact with matter and tends to just pass through everything, only interacting with stuff gravitationally. But in most of the predictions when it comes to dark matter particles, they can still sometimes interact with stuff, causing some kind of an annihilation. Now obviously to date there hasn't been any definitive sign of dark matter as a particle yet, and this mysterious substance, if it exists, is also one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology, but we naturally observe dark matter effects all over the universe, so there is definitely something there. Anything from gravitational lenses to massive galactic clusters colliding and producing various effects seems to point at the existence of some kind of an invisible particle, and a particle that doesn't like interacting with stuff, but does produce a lot of gravity. But assuming these particles come from some kind of a distant location, sometimes if they pass through a lot of stuff, such as for example through a lot of crust inside the planet, they might interact with something, changing into some other particle and as a result producing some kind of an energy event. And today there are a lot of different explanations for different types of dark matter annihilation, where dark matter collision destroys the particle, releasing energy. This phenomenon has actually been used to explain the excess gamma rays from various locations, including the galactic center. We've discussed this in one of the previous videos in the description. And so there's always this extremely low chance of the interaction with something inside the planet when dark matter particles go through Earth, which is actually how a lot of dark matter detectors tend to work. They basically create these massive structures, usually containing something inside, like liquid xenon, waiting for some kind of a dark matter interaction to produce some kind of an event inside. But to date, all of these detections so far have basically produced nothing. Which is why some scientists started to doubt the existence of dark matter as a particle and even tried to explain this in some other ways by possibly changing certain formula or providing alternative explanations. But surprisingly, this event seems to kind of make sense if this was a dark matter particle. And for one simple reason. If this is a dark matter particle, it's a lot more likely to interact with something and to produce actual emissions if it passes through a lot of earth and a lot of water, but it's extremely unlikely to produce any effects if it only passes through ice and a little bit of water, which is what would happen in the ice cube. Or just to rephrase this, 
a dark matter particle with such an unusual horizontal path is a lot more likely to produce emissions inside this underwater detector and not inside ice cube. And so the explanation in this new study suggests that this is some kind of a very powerful dark matter particle coming from some kind of a distant object, possibly a distant blazer, that then travels through Earth's rock and Earth's water, producing what's known as an overburden, a kind of a statistical event that causes dark matter particles to suddenly interact with something when there's just a lot of stuff they have to pass through. In this case, bumping into atoms and transforming into something else. And while well, according to the study, it first produced some kind of an unstable dark particle, which then fell apart, producing muons detected by the KM3Net. And in this case, the origin of this dark matter particle can be traced to a blazer, but a very likely much weaker one that's probably just not been detected yet. Because according to this study, and also previous propositions, any blazer of typical luminosity should be able to produce a dark matter particle traveling at very high velocities across billions and billions of light years. And here this would be a really, really tiny object, possibly as small as 10 to the power of minus 31 centimeters square, or much, much smaller than a typical atom, that would then go through approximately 400 kilometers of planet Earth, suddenly resulting in one powerful interaction. And because in the ice cube neutrino detector it would only travel approximately 12 kilometers, there similar detections would be practically impossible. And so definitely quite an unusual and somewhat intriguing proposition. But the question is of course, how likely is this and what does this all mean? Well, even for this explanation, we still need to find that blazer. And so far nothing has been discovered anywhere. In other words, even for a dark matter particle, it has to have come from some kind of a very powerful blazer-like object. Here, all of the dark matter particles coming out would actually have a lot of energy. Which means that we should be able to detect another one at some point. But at the moment this is still a pretty exciting explanation just because it tackles two of the biggest mysteries. The mystery of why Ice Cube saw nothing and the mystery of why this particle was so extremely powerful. Here the physical explanation does actually make some sense. But at the moment this is just a hypothesis. Chances are that until we find something else very similar or until we actually discover the blazer where it came from, we're not going to know exactly what happened. And so this very powerful event is going to remain a mystery for a pretty long time. It's definitely going to be studied by a lot of different scientists because this was just completely unexpected, but we're unlikely to have a definitive explanation for quite some time. And so until future propositions or someone else finds something else, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find a lot of different videos you might have not seen before, videos without any ads, and can obviously communicate with me directly. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership with additional member-only videos and early access, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.